Today I'll be comparing the DJI Osmo Action 1 to the new DJI Osmo Action 4. I just got this thing and I think it's gonna be awesome. So I'll be comparing the old one versus the new one, actually the first generation to the newest generation. And in case you're thinking about upgrading from this camera, which was one of the best cameras when it came out, well, we'll see if it's worth upgrading to this. And I, I think it is. So let's start off first with the DJI Osmo Action 1 and this is all auto exposure 4K recording with 25 frames per second and a normal picture profile. So a ready to use video coming straight out of this camera without the need to do any color grading or post production work. I'm also using Rocksteady which as you can see as I'm walking it does a really good job. So the stabilization was always one of the strongest features about this camera. The audio is also recorded straight into the camera without any additional microphones and well, this is how this looks. And if I step into a more dark place, the camera is going to adjust the exposure. So in terms of dynamic range, this is as much as you can get with the standard picture profile. And this is now the Decine-like picture profile, which gives me a little bit higher dynamic range, but it does require a bit of post-production work. So if I go back, to the sun you will see the difference in colors but I am as I said color grading so without the color grade this is how it looks and then with the color grade this is what you can get out of it now of course the camera is auto exposing and auto balancing everything as I'm walking so here we go this is the DJI Osmo Action 4 I'm using the open gate recording so a 4 by 3 aspect ratio and I can always crop into that 16 by 9 but this is the standard colors and full auto exposure and I I mean, looking at the screen, this actually looks so much better. So what's gonna happen when I go into the dark place, uh, into the shade? So how is this going to you know, auto-expose? For me, I mean, I'm definitely darker here when the background is brighter. But now, let's switch to that D-Log M. And this is the D-Log M picture profile. So the DJI LED Gamma image profile, which you need to color grade afterwards. And this is, I think, getting a lot of the dynamic range. So if I go back into the sun, you can see how this looks. So this is ungraded right now. This is what you get straight out of the camera. It's flat and desaturated. And it's not a final production video, but definitely once you apply a color grade, yeah, I mean, so much better. So the full dynamic range of this, I'm actually quite anxious to see how good this is going to be. I'm also using the Rocksteady Stabilizer and you have, well two, you have Rocksteady Stabilization and then Rocksteady Plus which crops in a little bit. So let's see how that works in a walking scenario. So this is the Rocksteady Plus Stabilizer now. It's cropped in a little more and I still think this is completely usable because it's such a wide angle lens. It's a 155 millimeter lens and at its widest it's equivalent to 12 millimeters full frame. So definitely, yeah, way more than, than I would ever possibly need but this is now with the Rocksteady plus hey Alex hey. how are you so let's try the horizon lock which is going to crop in a little bit more so this is with the horizon leveling engage it's cropped in a bit more and this is now a 16 by 9 aspect ratio you can do a 4 by 3 in this mode but if I tilt this to 45 degrees it's going to keep it level and then it's going to go all the way 90 degrees so yeah Interesting. Now the really cool thing about action cameras is that they all use the same kind of mounting system. Now I'm using the GoPro three-way mounter or like selfie stick and I've been using this since forever and I always attach my DJI Osmo Action onto this and the cool thing is of course that every new generation of DJI or you know GoPro use the same kind of screw-in system. But now with this new mount from DJI of course I can use the same thing as I did before but I have this magnetic thing which is really just like a fast attach on and attach off and I really love this thing but nobody tells you is that you have to you know, orient it the right way this way it's not going to go it has to be oriented the right way and it's just like a one-click solution and if you want to take the camera off you press on these two latches and just take it off now with the standard pack you get this housing which is also cool because now you can mount it this way around yeah, for the vertical shots. Now, if I do want to switch between these two cameras, I still have to unscrew everything because the magnetic mechanism is only for the new DJI Osmo Action and not for the old one, so yeah. Now, but with the original Osmo Action, you only have the rock steady, so no horizon leveling, as you can see. Now, this is just being rotated as I'm rotating the camera, and I've honestly never really missed horizon leveling, and I will probably not be using it uh, in terms of stabilization because I think, you know, dynamic shots are always more interesting and when we're talking about dynamic 
Hello, Alex. Hello. Please don't fall into the water. Now, when it comes to the size difference, you can see how much bigger the Osmo Action 4 is compared to the original Osmo Action. This is still a small form factor and I don't find it to be distracting, but it's definitely a big size increase from the first generation to the last generation. You also have both screens working at the same time on the new Osmo Action and the original Osmo Action can only display one screen, so either the front or the back. And the front screen on the Osmo Action 4 is touch sensitive where here it's not that sensitive it's just for displaying and for viewing and reviewing as you're filming yourself that's why this screen is actually made for the osmo action 4 also comes with its own cage if you buy the standard pack and it's actually a good cage it's made from plastic but it's it, it's a durable plastic at least that's how it feels and it does protect your camera from any sort of bumps and you can also place it now on the back side here because now there's an edge so you're not placing the camera directly onto the display now for the old osmo action I actually had to buy the Ulanzi cage. There are many cage options for the old Osmo Action because third-party companies are making accessories for this or were making accessories for this and it's well it's smaller but it's still a good cage. So this is from Ulanzi. I will try to put a link down in the description if I find it. But yeah now this is then how it looks in the cage where here you already have the, the attachment as a part of the cage and here you have that magnetic attachment function. One thing that has always bothered me on the Osmo Action is the fact that the subject if you're filming yourself like this is never in focus I mean the focus plane is way behind my head especially if I want to be closer to the camera like a traditional vlogging field of view now I'm definitely not in focus so I'm interested to see how much better the Osmo Action 4 is in this regard so is this better if I use the same field of view on the Osmo 4? Am I sharper or more in focus? So here's a side by side. I mean, I haven't actually checked the footage yet, so I'm quite interesting to see which one is better, but I can add depth of field to the background, you know, in post-production, like I do with the depth map in DaVinci Resolve Studio. It's going to make everything look more cinematic in its own way, so yeah. I mean, here I'm definitely in focus. I mean, I have to be, otherwise this is completely useless. Mosquitoes are eating me alive, by the way. Yeah, I'm in a swamp. Oh, definitely swamp. Now, in addition to the D-Lock picture profile, you also get 10-bit video recording, which is not present on the original Osmo Action. Now, I'm not really sure how much of a benefit this is, but as a general rule of thumb, you should have 10-bit video recording, at least if you're using a logarithmic image profile. So, definitely an upgrade compared to this. Now, because these are action cameras, I do have to try something that is, well, essential for an action camera, and that is the slow motion. I know that the slow motion effects or the slow motion shots on the Osmo Action 1, the original one, are really, really bad, like low resolution and just bad quality. So this shoots at 4K at 120 frames per second. I'll be using it with just 100 frames per second because I have a 25 frames per second timeline and it kind of fits, although it's, it really doesn't matter. But yeah, here's the Osmo Osmo Action 1. And now this is the Osmo Action 4. comes to auto exposure I think the Osmo Action 1 is exposing more for me whereas the Osmo Action 4 is exposing more for the highlights now I'm not really sure if that's some sort of algorithm inside but it's definitely brighter on the Osmo Action 1 compared to the Osmo Action 4 now because this is a lock picture profile with 10-bit colors I can do wonders in post-production but if you have your exposure set to auto then it's always going to be adjusting and that's going to be problematic in post-production because you will have to adjust your color grade to the exposure that is always changing so if you want to be a professional videographer then of course you have to do it manually all the way in this video everything is auto even the white balance so how are the colors between these two cameras i mean i think the osmo action one actually more orangier and this one is more cooler so this one looks more like the sony and this one looks more like a gopro which is even more orangier now one thing also that the osmo action 4 has over the original osmo action is the ability to digitally zoom whilst you're recording now i don't see this as a very useful feature but you can swipe to zoom in so this is now a two times zoom and i did this everything while i was recording of course very awkward because i make everything very awkward now 
it's part of the show, it's part of the fun of this channel. So yeah, if you haven't subscribed already, do that. Also hit the like button. Now the old Osmo Action also supports a 4x3 aspect ratio, but you don't have... What? But you don't have the rock steady stabilization. So you can see that it's, well, not really useful for an action camera. Oh, oh we have a turtle turtle over there. Okay, let's try this again, but this time with the HDR mode. The HDR mode on the old Osmo Action also is not supported for rock steady stabilization. It does offer a higher dynamic range, especially here in a, in a very contrasty, well-lit scene, but no rock steady. So it's, uh, you know, I mean, it's kind of vlogging with my Sony camera, which is shaky. This is not like action camera stuff, but now another big difference between the Osmo Action 4 and the original Osmo Action is the battery life. I've already run out of batteries here and this one still has maybe like a full third of battery left so this is a really big improvement between these two generations of cameras. Now in terms of responsiveness or respondability so how fast the camera is responding to your commands. The Osmo Action, no problem. Even the original Osmo Action with all of the firmware updates, and there were a lot of firmware updates to the original Osmo Action, it actually got faster. Even though the same hardware was in, it got much more responsive and much faster. Even the delay which you saw in the display was almost eliminated with the latest firmware, or I don't know which firmware that was. Here, I have the newest firmware on this camera, and there is actually no lag. I mean, I'm looking at the front screen and it's just doing like zero delay between what I'm doing and what I'm seeing on the display, which suggests that this camera has a really fast processor. But one of the main differences between the old Osmo Action and the new Osmo Action 4 is the sensor size. Now you can see that the sensor is much bigger on the Osmo Action 4 as it is on the Osmo Action 1. And this gives it a higher dynamic range, also a more clear and a higher resolution image compared to this. And you can mostly notice this in the slow motion shots where this is kind of not usable. This is why I've almost never used slow motion from the original Osmo Action and here I'm definitely going to use it on the new Osmo Action 4. So now let's do a low light comparison between these two cameras. So for the low light test, I mean, it doesn't get more low light than here. We have artificial lighting, but it's really dark. So how does the Osmo Action original compare to the Osmo Action 4? I'm betting the Osmo Action 4 is going to have a better image quality. So let me know down below, as always. And this is a comparison with the Sony full frame, so the a7 IV. This is how you know cameras with full frame sensors can actually look in a low light situation like this. This was my comparison of the DJI Osmo Action 1 to the DJI Osmo Action 4. If you have any comments or questions, leave that down in the comment section below. Also, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. And the next video is probably going to be recorded on the DJI Osmo Action 4. So thank you and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.